Hi, gun people. I wanted to go over the this video. Uh, Jonathan's. I think I might have done one or two of his videos before. Uh, I think he gives pretty good, solid advice. Um, in this video, he covers. I guess everyone who does videos has one person that just kind of irritates them because they give such bad advice. I mean, mine is asp. When somebody sends me one of his videos, it just drives me nuts because of the bad advice. And yet he's highly popular and he has a lot of followers, which I don't care. And I'm not faulting a guy. And I'm not saying he's a mean guy and he should burn. I'm, I, I know people want to make it out that, you know, I want to I want to see the guy's destruction. And I don't. I just, when, when you understand a topic and you know something, and I'm sure there's people that feel that way about me. You know, if I start talking about medical or a truck or if I talk about a Ford or a Toyota or if I get in any subject that someone else is really has expertise in, they come here and go, you're an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. You drive me nuts because they understand every in and out and little things. So uh, <laughs> I get the impression a little bit that this guy is Jonathan's menaces, uh, because he not because he hates him. But because he's trying to point out that this guy, although popular, and although he can shoot, doesn't mean that he gives good, solid, survivable, good, real-world advice. He gives sound good, looks cool advice that people like, but it's not really practical. And that's kind of what I got from this video. Video's 36 minutes. I got to admit, I put it on time and a half to speed it up. Uh, just because I just don't watch a lot of videos and you know and I know everybody has a limited amount of time but if you have time you want to check out his videos I think he does a pretty good job on a few videos that I've watched of his on giving out good sound reasonable from experience advice and I can tell he has actual experience because I'm listening to the advice he's giving and why he's giving it so if you want to check out this video I'm gonna play a little short clip here of, of this one part that I thought was pretty right on point teaching just shooting it fast with fast rounds per minute. And that was it. Now you'll notice this guy turns his gun safe really fast. He points his gun really fast. He takes his magazine out really fast. He clears his gun. He looks down. Very, very kind of uh, what I call the tactical cool kind of movements. He looks cool when he does all this stuff. And that's that's kind of what a lot of inexperienced people see has he must know what he's doing because he looks cool. Me, on the other hand, wandering around on my freaking cowboy boots and a hat, people are cracking on what I'm wearing because I got a gut and whatever. I don't know what I'm talking about. So, you know, the way people see things, some don't reason through whether or not the advice is sound coming from someone that may not look cool versus the advice being crap but coming from someone who looks cool. 210. So two consistent times. Nice group, and this requires shooting a small target like this, that speed, this distance, high overboard, all that good stuff, requires good... Re First of all, he's shooting a rifle at a very close distance, and anybody can get pretty good groups with a rifle, hell, even if you don't even use sights at a close distance. I'm not taking away from this guy's shooting. I don't know this guy. I've never... Hell, m maybe everybody will be, oh, he's great, you don't know what you're talking about, he's a hundred times better than you. Whatever, I don't know. Like I said, you know, there's always people that come here and want to jump on me for giving out bad advice or cracking on somebody because they're so much better or know so much more. I don't know this guy. I'm telling you. I didn't do research. I don't care. I'm doing this video because I think Jonathan gives good sound advice. Jonathan is showing his video and critiquing things that he disagrees with. And I think open, free information is good. So that's why uh, you can choose on who you want to watch and who you don't. Cool management. You're not going to do this with bad fundamentals and bad technique, and you're definitely not going to do this if you're holding a magwell like this. Okay, well, let me tell you this, Lucas. You know why guys hold magwells like this? It's because they carry it all day. Good. I'm telling you, man. I carried my gun like that, and when you're carrying it all the time, it's easier. Uh, keeping your arm that's stiffed out, and Jonathan points that out, makes a good point. Again, it looks cool. It may help reduce, I think they call it the clamp or C-clamp or something, I, I, whatever, where the, the arm is stiff. And I've had a lot of people come here and tell me, you need to put your arm out straight and you can re control recoil. Well, look, a 5.56 ain't got a whole bunch of recoil in the first place. Second of all, I'm not shooting fully auto or the gun's rising. So, and, and Jonathan covers some of those things, but I, I you'll see me a lot with my hand here 
or I have an angle grip here. Uh, if you have a foreign grip way up here, that probably helps it recoil, but most people don't carry with that. It, but again, what are you training for? And I think Jonathan hits that. What, what are you training for? Uh, a lot of people will train for time. This guy's got a timer. He's big into time. A lot of people will train for competitions. Uh, I think time behind the gun is good. Uh, if you're shooting, you're going to be better. You're going to understand the gun, etc. But it will also, if you're doing it wrong or bad fundamentals or you're learning bad habits, it will reinforce that habits and it will create what I call negative training or negative muscle memory. And that will not be good in actual situation. And again, the greatest example I can tell you is California Highway Patrol, supposedly the greatest law enforcement agency in the land. They'll tell you they're the greatest. They run around. They had a TV show. They must be great because Hollywood loved them. They trained for years with, with, before they had some automatics with revolvers. You had to dump your rounds in your hand and put your rounds in your pocket at the range because the range guys didn't want their range dirty and they didn't want to have to pick up brass after you left. So at training every day, every time a CHP was trained a shot, he had to dump his rounds, no matter what kind of training it was, in his hand and put the rounds in his pocket. And when the four CHP got in an actual shooting and they all died because of their poor training, even though they were known as the greatest law enforcement agency in the land with the greatest training, even though the four officers died in a shootout, they had brass in their pocket. And the CHP has done a campaign since then and tried to suppress that because they don't want to be known for that. But facts are facts. And you'll find some information, well, that's true and that's not true. It is true. I was around back closer to the time when it happened and there was evidence out there and now it's kind of been suppressed. But I'm telling you, I, why would someone make that up? The, the CHP wants to make up that it didn't happen because it makes them look bad. But I'm telling you, you will do in an actual situation what you do in training, bad training, negative training, picking up bad habits when you're shooting at only ranges with range instructors, being safe. Okay, in a gunfight, safe isn't a concern of mine. I want to survive. I want to get rounds off faster, quicker, stop the threat faster than he can hit me. I want to learn how to seek cover, move, and shoot. I want to do things to live. I could care less. If I laser you, if I make you feel uncomfortable, if you're nervous because my finger's on the trigger, because my gun's not on safe, because my gun's not pointed in a safe direction, I don't give a shit about that in an actual shooting. But people that only train where that is programmed into their head on ranges and they don't do actual real world live fire training scenarios, that's what they're going to do in training. It creates lag time. It slows down your response time. It puts more factors into your thought process. When you should be dealing with the threat, you're dealing with, oh, I got to ma maintain my safe. I got to make sure my gun's on safe. I'm not on target. I, I don't want to point at something unless I'm on target. I want to make sure. It, and you're doing all these things that mess up. But anyway, let me get back. I kind of went on a damn tangent. Long, when it's 130 degrees with all that shit on, body armor, Kevlar, water, frags, Six spare mags plus one in the weapon, 210 rounds, first aid kit, cam lights. They're carrying all this shit. And this E-clamp stuff that people do up here, that's going to exhaust you really, really fast, okay? And over time, you're going to get tired if you've, you know, carried it a long distance, okay? This is from experience. You're going to end up choking the weapon further and further and further back until you do a mag weld. And when you're in the prone, nothing wrong with doing that. You're not going to do a C-clamp in the prone. It's, 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 it's silly. Great point. Everybody wants to train, 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 have that other arm, great, the C-clamp, the stiff arm, whatever you want to call it, straight arm, whatever, recoil reducing arm, whatever. You can call it what you want in a prone. You don't see anybody doing that. And consistency, hey, uh, you know, if you're in a prone, somebody's going to tell you your magazine shouldn't be on the ground because it will disrupt the barrel and it can cause the barrel to flex and your barrel should be free floating. And if you want an accurate shot, Nothing, the weapon shouldn't be touching anything and it should be free floating. And yeah, 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 if and butts and coconuts, yeah, all that matters. But again, most firefights, we're not shooting a thousand yards. People aren't shooting at us that far. And we're not shooting at them that far. We're laying down suppressor fire. We're getting rounds down range. We want to stop the dude from shooting at us so we can maneuver and get to a better position. So look, I, I think Jonathan gives some good advice. If you guys can go check out his video, cool. 
Um, if not, that's okay too. But he he goes over some good things and looking at this guy shooting, this guy looks really tactical cool and he does a lot of tactical cool stuff. But I don't know his experience. But you know what? Watching this limited video that Jonathan showed and listening to Jonathan and looking at this guy, I'll go with Jonathan nine times out of ten, if not 99 times out of 100. But anyway, we'll end that there. And uh, if you want to go check out his channel, cool. Uh, good little video here on he brings up some good points about real world versus, uh, you know, tactical cool time shooting on a range to win three gun pink ribbon that you can hang on your wall and tell everybody you're a great shot. All right, we'll end that there.